Hey everybody, what's happening? We're here with Greg Birch, the art director on XCOM 2. Greg, we had a chance to view the game actually yesterday. Um, it, 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 it's a very great looking game, I must say. <laughs> you should be very proud. And you were also the art director on the first one as well. Yeah. So what was the, what was the goal uh, when you set out to, to create the new direction and the style of the game? So uh, when we set out to make the new direction of the game, uh, again, it's 20 years in the future. You've, you've, you've lost the war in the beginning, and now the aliens have come and, and, and kind of taken over Earth, uh, and you're setting out to reclaim it. So um, one of the nice things is you're 20 years in the future, um, and so you can do some, some cool stuff that maybe you couldn't do in a linear sure. uh, sequel. Um, and so, you know, we've got these, these beautiful cities that are, you know, gleaming and clean and, and just, 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 just made to look like a utopia. The grass is maybe not quite like real, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, uh, it, it sets us up to, to start making, you know, really, di really diverse environments to play in. Uh, all, the, all the stuff in the game, we've, we've just, just amped everything up, like the fidelity of the characters, uh, not only the textures, uh, but the, the geometry, there's more, it's cleaner. The uh, animation, there's more fidelity in that as well. Uh, we switched to uh, physically based rendering, so all the materials are, are, are have, have real tangible qualities to them. Metal looks like metal, and you know, wood looks like wood, and uh, fabric looks like fabric, and leather is leather. So it allows us to really create this diversity and this this, this tangible quality about the game uh, that kind of fuels that sort of diorama look to it. Um, and then on top of it, you know, we, we're constantly trying to create these like immersive uh, settings and, and, and player experiences. And so we're still dropping the camera down and there's all sorts of pot reveals and wherever we have a cinematic opportunity, um, we take it. And, and, and also uh, wherever one of those opportunity lines up with, with also showing off a gameplay mechanic like hacking that you guys saw yeah. or carry body where you pick up your soldier, right. um, you know, we're totally going to do that. So it's all things that are kind of reinforcing the game design as well as making, trying to make them a more immersive experience for the player narrative. Yeah, sure, and even the style of game, I think you, you mentioned all the different things that you guys have done from a visual perspective. It only creates that much more depth, which yeah. in a strategy game just makes that much more entertaining. Yeah. And, and you know, um, Gameplay-wise, what, what are some of the differences from, from the first one uh, that we can expect to see? Uh, so you guys saw concealment, right? So squad concealment is a big thing, right? Um, in the original game, you know, you stumble the aliens and they get a free turn on you. The, the, this game, you know, again, the guerrilla nature of it lends itself to this, but the concealment mechanic is really good. It just gives you a chance to actually uh, get the jump, set up like a dove, double overwatch like you guys saw in the demo, and, and, and kind of get the jump on the aliens as opposed to all the way around. Um, that's definitely a new mechanic. Hacking is a completely new mechanic. You're able to go and, you know, you saw that turret, that vent turret actually got hacked. Control of it. You took control of it and you, you know, used it against them. Uh, the carry body mechanic is completely new. Uh, the, the soldier classes, again, we're, we've added depth to the visual, but we're also adding depth to the, the, to the gameplay. We're trying to push everything apart, not, of, not only the aliens, which there are more of in this game than in EU, but uh, with the soldier classes. So you saw the melee, yeah. the ranger had, pulls out the sword and, and slices the viper. The uh, specialist is the gremlin that flies up and uh, takes care of the, 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 the turret. So you're, you're seeing all these things where we're just trying to push everything apart and make everything more unique and everything a little more specialized. Excellent. Excellent. Gage? Uh, so with the demo we saw, we saw some interesting creatures that yeah. uh, were <laughs> showing off. Um, it's a good word for it. Yeah, in <laughs> interesting is a good word because where, where does the inspiration come for something that looks so devilish? Like, what, where, where did you guys get that kind of idea? Go home and tell the concept guy, go draw me your worst nightmare. And yeah, right. Then they come <laughs> in and you say, go draw me your second worst nightmare. Right. Um, but, but no, the, uh, the, the aliens, again, uh, you know, one of the things about XCOM that's always been XCOM is that the aliens are this menagerie of, of beasts and, 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 and villains. And so uh, it's great to, to help push them apart. Uh, we've got the Viper, who is just, it's just a completely different character. Nothing looks like it. Nothing animates like it in the game. Um, and it's very unique, very elegant, uh, very quick, very, very slick. Uh, and she can rip you out of cover and then bind you up, which is completely terrifying in XCOM if you don't have cover. And then... <laughs> And then, uh, and then the, to contrast that, we've got, you know, you guys saw the Berserker, and she comes out of nowhere, and she's this big, bruising, hawking beast, um, you know, and she's got these little portals on her that she may be tweaked by some chemicals, who knows. But, you know, she comes out of, the, out of nowhere, 
and she's the scale of her is enormous, right? So there's a scale range between the characters, and you don't want to get close to her, and you know she she can come come make life life difficult for you. And then you've got the the advent mechs that we showed, and they come in and they're, you know they're just devastating from a distance. Um, uh, so yeah, there's a there's a real range. Um, but between the, between the aliens and the game, quite the cast of characters there. Yeah. So, um, what question? Well, one of my favorite questions to ask is, what's your favorite part of the game? Someone who's worked on it and seen it grow and become a thing. What's what is what you're proud of? What do you like? So, one of the biggest challenges uh, with the game, and when we started out, the very first thing we wanted to achieve was procedural levels. Um, you know, it, not only is that a tech hurdle, but it's a visual hurdle. It's something that's pretty hard to do, um, and and honestly required a lot of thought. We had to know, uh, we had to have XCOM One, Enemy Unknown under our belts before we even begin to really get this tackled. And so coming out of XCOM 1, that was the very first thing. It was the, probably the number one, hands down, the number one fan requested uh, 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 design feature. And and so we set out to make that right out of the gates. And and we you know we, we were able to accomplish it. It's, it's really robust. It's really flexible. You can make your levels as procedural as you want or as non-procedural as you want. All of our levels in the game are procedural. We have procedural mission objectives. Um, as well, so they're always different. The pacing feels different. Things change. We've got chain, time of day changes, weather changes, all sorts of cool stuff coming um, for the player. But but the fact that you can make those experiences, uh, the modders, if they want, can go in there and make those experiences. They can handcraft an experience, or they can make a procedural experience, much like what we do throughout the game, um, is, is a really cool thing. It's something I'm very proud of that we did, that we were able to accomplish. That's very cool. Will, uh, anything else? Sure. What platforms are you coming out on? So we will be out on PC um, and Mac and Linux, okay. uh, November 2015. That was my next question, November 2015. Speaking of PC, you guys actually won our best PC yes, game award. Yes, you did. Award. Oh, awesome. Thanks, guys. That's so cool. Best there strategy game, awesome. actually. Best strategy game? Yeah, that you won our best strategy game. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. Guys. Very much appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. We'll see you soon.